hello there friends it's emma here the bookish princess we're off to ireland today i have another installment in my throwback travel series this is from a trip i took with my brother porthos to ireland back in 2016. we both flew into dublin and then headed straight west for the atlantic we stopped briefly in cork and then drove on to the skellig ring i was a little bit nervous about those irish roads this is a two-lane road <laughs> We're laughing because it's true. But we made it out to County Kerry and our first destination, which was Skellig Michael. This is an ancient Irish island monastery and also the Jedi Island from The Force Awakens. Hope you guys enjoy. Oh my gosh, if I could buy them all, I would. Um, we're just stopping at the uh, gas station to grab some things for our drive, and then we're off to court. Here I am, on the road again. There we go. Are you singing? Are you the soundtrack? Turn the page. Oh my gosh. <laughs> wow, tunes by Porto. Good job. Car kick, luminous, car shard. I like all the is an Irish exit sign. It is not American. That's the truth. Those confusing roads. Why is there so much? It's so busy. The road is so busy even when there's no one on it. What are you talking about? Are you being snarky in that gas? I am. You're not the one driving on the wrong side of the car. <laughs> so stop talking. Crash at the end of the road of the oh god, he's speaking Irish. Irish. Show, the he's the giving Irish. us the news in Irish. Yeah, yeah, Irish. 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 So we're on the road to Cork right now. It's going okay. I have to admit, yesterday when I got the um, at the car, because I picked up the car last night, and I was pretty much completely freaked out. But we're, we're doing okay. Yeah, it was, you know, in, in uh, Star Wars The Force Awakens, in Cork, which is our first destination in Ireland this week. We're gonna head and check out the English market. Well, that 
and there is the English market. I did not realize that they are closed on Sundays. Samantha Brown visits the English market in one of those episodes of Passport to Europe. So that's kind of a bummer. But that's right, we're gonna head to St. Philip Forest Cathedral and there are plenty of other shops open, so at least not everything's closed. <laughs> Guys, I left my sunglasses in the car because it was raining most of the way here. Now I have my sunglasses. And yet it's still cloudy overhead. But guys, they have a Fanafi milkshake. We're obviously getting one. All sorts of subs and sandwiches. Because this is the sub shop. I like the bright colors. This, my friends, is the Fanafi milkshake. It tastes just like Fanafi. The cream is the caramel. It's amazing. Well, Cork does have a lot of feel of Venice about it, the way the river runs through it, and there are so many bridges. Here's St. Finbarra's up here. Almost there. Oh, it's a beautiful shape. It's more, much more contained than most cathedrals, but I like the little rounded bit at the end. That is a cannonball. That right there is a cannonball. Apparently, there was an old cathedral on this site because there have been. This is an ancient site. Saint Finbar himself was supposedly found in a monastery here, um, and then this cathedral is Victorian, so they demolished the old. They demolished the old cathedral in like the 1860s to make way for it, and when they demolished the old cathedral, they found that. Cannonball stuck in the steeple. This is the ambulatory. I think that's a great word. I think we need to use the word ambulatory. Look at all the pipes. This is the Grand Parade. This is Cork's medieval wall, which unfortunately the castles that used to be here are gone. Look, this is so interesting. The motto, Stasio Benefita Carinis, a safe harbor for ships, is supposed to have derived from the medieval period when ships docked within the city walls. Wouldn't that be crazy? I guess the river is a, were wide enough and everything. Yeah, and there was supposed to be a river that once ran through this Grand Parade. We are in search, my friends, of a coffee place called Alchemy Coffee. We're supposed to have really good histories and amazing coffee. I seriously love it. All the buildings are just so beautifully painted. I see it, you guys. Coffee and bookstore. We're being coffee hipsters. This feels like one of those places where you're looked, you're looked down on if you ask for cream. Like, I'm not even sure they have cream to give you. Like, you, you have your coffee black. This is one of those places where macchiato is like a really intense shop. It's not a Starbucks. That's, you know that? That's a fake. A macchiato at Starbucks is actually just basically a vanilla caramel latte. So, yeah, this place is legit. It's also a bookshop, so I think if we wanted any of these books, we could ask for them. I like the stack of, I think there's some Dickens over there. Oh guys, this is, this is what this came. We got a brownie. Here is, what, you got a black. Well, it'll be interesting to see how it is. This is a raspberry Bakewell tart and a dark hot chocolate. 
So my hot chocolate is amazingly chocolatey. Like this stuff is so, so good. This is coffee. I'm telling you, coffee. Everything else, Starbucks, not really coffee. That is coffee. And this brownie, oh my gosh. It's such dark, dark, dark chocolate and they warmed it up. It's so soft. I really like it. What do you think about it? Like, it comes with a side of cream, whipped cream. And this is my raspberry bake well, which is also quite nice. Alchemy. Definitely magical. This painting that's for sale is called My Soul on Canvas. Oh, and it's been sold. He sold his soul. The essence of coffee is not to feel more awake, but to feel refreshed. So says Porthos. In such a way, it's in such a way that normal drinks cannot accomplish. Naturally. That was pretty amazing coffee. We got one to go because it was that pork, good. You're doing yourself a disservice if you don't. <laughs> it's basically alchemy coffee is a necessary stop. It's not far from the cathedral actually on here on Barrick Street. We're strolling down Cork's main shopping street. This is bringing back so many memories of when I lived in Dublin because all of these shops, Penny's is right there. That's like the uh, Irish version of Primark which is like the uh, British version of Walmart, kind of, sort of. And then we have Dunn's up here. I always went to the Dunn's on Grafton Street. There's Brown Thomas, which is like the Irish Harrods. So fun. And at number Very good to drive in Ireland. How close am I that side? Um, you, maybe a couple inches. I, I must be right on it, but these people are right on me, so. You gotta do it. Okay, we can do this. this and well. this old man with his foot in the road. Just and gonna this, run him over. <laughs> and this guy <laughs> trying to turn right, left, and the center. Oh, oh man. Look at all these. Oh dear. Oh dear. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh, oh, oh my. <laughs> I'm a this road. I like the colorful house. This road is almost as bad as my Irish accent. <laughs> Not quite though. No, definitely far worse. <laughs> oh, at least we're stopping for a minute now. <laughs> and the engine stops every time you stop the car. Alright, Oh, car I can't go mall. Go mall. 
That's what that means. They had Gomal printed on, on the, the, road. the road, and we weren't quite sure. Yeah, what it apparently meant. it's slow. Yes, yeah, these are the severe bends. Severe bends. This is the t traction part of oh, test track. Test track. Yeah. yeah. These Irish roads, I'm telling you. Hey guys, so we made it to our b, b our guest house in Kalorglin, which is not too far from Port McGee, so tomorrow morning we're heading straight out to go see the Skellix. I almost wish we had longer though because this is such a charming place. It's called the Grove Lodge. I didn't realize it was so cute. So this is our room. Two nice beds. I love the little window area. It's like a little porch almost. And out there is the river. I think it's the River Lee. Is that right? I think it's the River Lee, and they have like a sitting area and beautiful gardens. Nice little chairs there. Here, should we take a quick look in the bathroom? Nice bathroom, got everything you need. For a short stay here, but uh, we're gonna head into town real quick. I think most things will be closed, but we'll see what we can see. Um, and I think we're gonna walk around through the gardens because they look just beautiful. So this is the reception area. Very nice. They do offer breakfast. We're not going to be trying it because we're leaving so early. Um, but I think it's 10 euro extra. We did it through booking.com, which was great. Step outside. Oh, look, they've got a little uh, seating area upstairs, too. Oh my gosh, these flowers, though, are so amazing. Just look at the terrace. And there's the River Lee just down there. Look at this little riverside terrace at the Grove Lodge and the mountains in the distance are just majestic. Especially the way the clouds are sort of, they look like it's a, a sort of cloak that the mountain is casting off its cloak of clouds. Like Luke Skywalker casts off his cloak in the Ford's Wagon. Yes, I have to admit, we picked this hotel mostly because it's about an hour's drive from Port McGee and we're doing Skelly Michael. First things for our morning, so I didn't want to have a super long drive. Since uh, it had really good reviews on TripAdvisor and looked really sweet, but I didn't realize it had such a beautiful garden here. And this view over the lake is so lovely. I almost wish we had longer to spend in Kalorglin because this is just grand. So I think this is the breakfast area. Yeah, it was 10 extra euro for breakfast and we had to leave early tomorrow anyway. But the um, hotel owner was very nice. We should check this in. Um, yeah, it's been a short stay, but very fun. Yes, yeah, so this patio outside of the hotel is just beautiful. And now we're going to go back down this little pathway into our room, which has its own little door. supposed to be our Skellig Michael day. We got up really early. We drove the two hours from Kalorglin to Port McGee. Port McGee is the town where all of the Skellig Michael boats leave from. I did plan to have two mornings in Port McGee, so two possible days we could sail because they warn you when you book your tickets that depending on the weather, the trips to Skellig Michael can't always go out. Unfortunately, it was super windy. You'll hear the wind in my clips. I'll probably have to add subtitles. <laughs> yes, one of those boats. So 
since our Skellig Michael plans were scotched, we decided to get out of the wind. Uh, we had a really nice breakfast at a cute little cafe in Port McGee. Looking out on some very brightly colored buildings. I like the stormtrooper in the window. After breakfast, we hit the road to drive around the Skellig Ring. We kept seeing these signs for the most beautiful, most spectacular cliffs in Kerry, so we decided to start there. Uh, so they've got a replica of the beehive huts out on the Skelligs. That's what we'll see tomorrow. Those roofs on top are fake. <laughs> and up here, we're just walking up through the mist. Wow, it's so nice. to the most spectacular cliffs in Cary. That's what it says on the street signs. But there they are. Almost hidden in the mist. some fairy I wonder they have so much amazing folklore in Ireland when they have such an amazing landscape to inspire it. It does look like a giant maybe. Look at this weird prehistoric being. <laughs> it's I guess a snail, but it's missing its shell. Shoot, I'm not focus. Wow, it can even see the skeletons, but you know, the wind. This is a two-lane road. <laughs> We're laughing because it's true. I'm just going to pull over here. Am I going to hit We're anything? just pulling over so we don't die in a head-on collision, you know. Yeah, uh, I mean, just, just something you, you do. <laughs> Mary <laughs> Prince Ross. <laughs> I guess that makes me Chewbacca. <laughs> Look, they've got 
<laughs> BPA. That's pretty fantastic. <laughs> Not flip flops today. Wow, it smells delicious. I have to say, the Puffin Cafe. Look at those shoes. I think this is a little representation of Skellig Michael, complete with puffins and birds and turtles and a little sailing ship. Oh my gosh, that looks delicious. Oh my goodness. Chocolate biscuit cake. <laughs> chocolate fudge cake. We got some dark chocolate, hot chocolate, and some tea here at the Puffin Cafe. I like how you can see some ruins right out there with some cows just casually hanging out. And in that direction is the sea and Skellig. That was the Daniel O'Connell Memorial Church. So this is Cahar Sabine. It's really nice. Oh, look, puffins. I like that Star Wars on Skelly shirt. Although overall, I don't think there's been too much. You know, it hasn't been like everywhere. Just here. We're staying in the red building. It looks so colorful down there. This is so beautiful. This island that we are on now, we're about to take the gray head leap. Yes, we are sharing this pathway with sheep. <laughs> There's one right there. Wow, this is so beautiful. And looking back at the colorful houses and the fields. Hello, sheep. How are you? The skelligs. That, my friends, looks like a bog. If ever I did see something that looked like a bog, it's that. Oh, look, there's some cows really up the hill, too. The sun is coming out from this. Watching the shadows of the clouds move across. Look, you can see them moving. They move so fast. Moving across the fields. That's so cool. We have been climbing higher and higher of Port, above Port McGee, which is down there. Look at the pattern of the clouds and the sunlight on the fields. So up here, it looks like there's some sort of little structure. This sheep beat us to it. Yeah, it hasn't been that busy. I wonder, and here I know it's June. 
is they're supposed to be very touristy. And this morning, when we weren't able to get the um, ferry out to the Skelligs, there were a fair number of other people waiting around, also asking, running today. I shouldn't say ferry, it's just What did you find in there? Nothing much. It looks just like, like a lighthouse sort of deal, or just, just empty. This path may be grassy, but don't be fooled. It's practically going up a sheer cliff. <laughs> I feel like I should be like, if I'm standing up straight, I feel like I'm at a 45 degree angle. <laughs> your foot leaves the ground. <laughs> Somewhat, I mean, so challenging we have to go off the path. <laughs> Here's the car ferry coming into Knightstown. We did not take the car ferry. I think they're just gonna drive up right out of the sea. Um, yeah, we did go into Carsveen earlier today, but then we drove back around to Port McGee, and then we drove from Port McGee, and there's a bridge over to Valencia Island, and then we drove on Valencia Island to get to Knightstown. We didn't take the ferry, although that would have been an option. Yes, we're just taking a quick stroll here. Look at all the boats. Very cheerfully painted. I like this cheerful red. Towers here. I think we're going to give 
the Royal Valencia Dry. We're having dinner here in the galley at the Royal Valencia. I like this, their mission statement, to provide quality and value 30 paces from the Atlantic. And in fact, you can see right out the window there, the ocean is right there. I got some bruschetta, which is goat's cheese and a mysterious kind of relish, which the Irish love this kind of relish. Can you see that in a lot of food? I might, I might scrape some of it off. But uh, the salad looks very nice. Porthos got, oh, look at your rice. Some chicken curry. Looks delicious. This looks like a nice hotel. Very grand. Well, the galley was entirely delicious, I thought. It was really good. Even the um, relish, which I don't usually relish, I quite liked a lot. Now we're going to drive back over to Port McGee. Oh, the moorings has a little guest lounge looking out over the harbor there. Oh wow, they have a little library you can choose from too. That's very nice. Do they have any books on the Skelligs we could read up before our trip tomorrow? So we made it back from our cruise. We had a delicious dinner. And now we're gonna probably have an early night. I thought I'd give you guys a quick tour of the room here. We're in number 11. So here's the room. This so we have two wicker chairs, little uh, what's the word I'm looking for? My brain isn't working. Uh, vanity area. Little TV. Two beds. Here's the bathroom. Take a quick look. Give you a quick tour. I don't think this um, notice here says, P.S. If your bathroom has a jacuzzi bath, instructions for use can be found in your guest information folder. I don't think this one has the jacuzzi. <laughs> but yes, it's a very nice place. Very convenient to the harbor. Basically couldn't be any closer. And I've heard that they have amazing food, so I'm definitely looking forward to breakfast tomorrow. This buffet. Here's my table. Look at this. I got the vegetarian, which is basically a fall Irish without all the meat. <laughs> So I'm going to spare you guys the long story of our boat experience because it was not a good one. I didn't really film any of it um, because it was kind of a nightmare. Basically the captain was very, very late and very, very unpleasant. We finally did get out on the water, which was great, but then the closer we got to the island, there were these huge waves that would come crashing into the boat and would have soaked us if not for the extremely dirty ponchos they gave us to wear. But you know what? Ray had to go through some ordeals before she made it to her Jedi Island, and we did make it to our island in the end. What did you What did you just say, Poythos? These are our first steps. We made it to Skellig Michael. There's the little Skellig there. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. That boat ride was like a long bad dream. Oh, they've got a helicopter pad. Let's be real guys, that would be the way to come to Skelly Michael. The boat ride is quite an experience. <laughs> I wish we could have taken a helicopter.
think we're about to enter the monastery. Will we find Luke in here? Wow. Wow, look at how far off. Those are the cliffs we visited yesterday. There's the little skellig. So these are the huts the monks lived in. Oh my gosh. They're incredible. Wow. It's so dark, I bet you can't see a thing. Those stone huts were so cool. They're a lot bigger than I imagined. And you can see how they built them. They really tried to shelter themselves from like gales and wind. Because you have to like go up a few steps and then you're inside the little beehive of stone. This place is crazy. Yep, guys, next time we come to Skillet, we'll definitely take the helicopter. I think that might be our boat out there. It's gonna be taking us back to Port McGee. I probably won't be filming on the boat, and I wasn't filming on the way here because it was basically um, kind of traumatic. <laughs> The waves are so big, they're like as big as the boat, and the boat is kind of rollicking up and down in them. Luckily they did give us ponchos, there aren't life jackets actually, um, but the ponchos were great because otherwise we would be soaked to the skin right now. So yeah, now part two. Oh look at the Ghost of Ireland, 
so beautiful. Well, we made it back 